I am Deacon Sam Dunning. I direct the Office of Justice and Peace and the Catholic Campaign for Human Development for the Archdiocese of Galveston, Houston. And as we get closer and closer to the presidential elections in November, my office is quite frequently beset with questions, emails, and phone calls by Catholics regarding the U.S. Bishop's particular stance on certain issues. And I always encourage Catholics to take a very long and studied look at uh, the faithful citizenship document that our bishops promulgate every four years in anticipation of the presidential uh, election. And in this case, forming consciences for faithful citizenship is, in my judgment, one of the finer documents that has been uh, issued by our bishops regarding political activity. The U.S. bishops talk a great deal throughout the, or write throughout the, uh, the document a great deal about uh, the role of the Catholic Church and the role of the Catholic laity uh, in the public square. In one of their wonderful lines, they tell us that citizenship is a virtue, but participation in the political process is a moral obligation. So just as it is incumbent upon you and me as Catholics to uh, attend Mass every Sunday, to partake of the body and blood of Christ in the liturgy of the Eucharist, it is also very important for us to live the Eucharist in our everyday lives. And of course, this includes our role as citizens of one of, of the greatest democracy in the world. What do the bishops say about political participation? They do encourage us, of course, to vote. This is one of the great rights that we have as citizens. And when I talk with, uh, with people who come to our country from other lands where political participation is frustrated and in some cases uh, limited by law, they talk about the right to vote. And as they become citizens, this is one of the, the, the great exercises that they, that they participate in with relish. But as the U.S. bishops emphasize in forming consciences for faithful citizenship, being a faithful citizen is, although it includes voting, voting consistently, it includes far, far more. And whether it's uh, participating in a political campaign, whether it's contributing to a political party, uh, all of the, these also are included in acts of faithful citizenship, but also engaging at the community level, helping to transform our neighborhoods through uh, community organizing projects or economic development projects. And as the bishops emphasize in their faithful citizenship document, obviously for us Catholics, the, the issue of protecting the unborn, the right to life issue is of paramount concern. It's preeminent among the issues that you and I face in the public square. But they also remind us that in addition to protecting the unborn, the right to life issue, from it flows a number of other rights uh, that they that they tell us that we are obligated as Catholics to consider as well in deciding for whom we should vote and what political party we should support, what political movement we should engage in. They talk about uh, the right to life being frustrated, the quality of life being frustrated through racial discrimination, through poverty, uh, through, in the foreign realm, uh, the practice of unjust wars. All of these things also should take, be taken into account when we attempt to decide who we're going to vote for, what issues we are going to try to address as citizens. In the Compendium of the Social Doctrine of the Church, in paragraph 565, which I would encourage Catholics to take a serious look at, the, uh, the Vatican goes through a number of criteria that we as Catholics are obligated, their language, obligated to take into account in our decisions. Uh, the pursuit of the common good and the spirit of service, uh, the uh, development of justice with particular attention to situations of poverty and suffering, a respect for the autonomy of earthly realities, which is a recognition of the division of church and state that is in many ways uh, a part of public life, not preventing the church from becoming engaged in public life, but, uh, but uh, outlawing our dictating of what happens in the public square. Also, the principle of subsidiarity, which encourages us to become involved at the very local level and encouraging helping the poor to help themselves break out of the cycle of poverty. And also the promotion of peace and dialogue in a spirit of solidarity, recognizing that uh, even though we try to address problems locally, some problems are so intractable, so big, 
that we do have to join with others in solidarity, uh, encouraging government and labor unions and business associations uh, to become engaged in alleviating suffering and poverty uh, in, our, in our area, in our neighborhoods, in our state, uh, and in our nation.